thank you for present, letting me present here. I'm Ina Ludwig, and as I already mentioned, I work as a business development manager for aerospace and also as a research associate for Fraunhofer IAPT. Um, IAPT stands for um, Research Institute for Additive Production Technologies. Um, we were integrated in Fraunhofer in 2018 before we were at the Laser Center North um, in, located in Hamburg, so maybe you know all older name. And today my presentation is about increasing research, resource efficiency of aviation by innovative materials and bionic design for metal components made by additive manufacturing. Um, first, I will give you a little introduction about our institute. Um, maybe you already heard of us uh, from the FCRC bracket that was um, yeah, kind of a breakthrough in 2014 in a cooperation with Airbus. Uh, uh, for example, in 2018, we designed and printed the caliper here for Bugatti uh, from titanium, the world's largest three dental titanium part printed with a laser based powder bed fusion. But today for aviation and aerospace, we are focusing on our European success story, the project Bionic Aircraft. You can see it here on the right. Um, I will go into further details later, so we'll heard enough of this project. Um, in general, additive manufacturing offers a lot of potentials in aviation. Um, we're starting with prototyping. I mean, additive manufacturing, a few years ago, it was just used for prototyping, and now it's transferred to real use parts. Um, a great example for using it still as a prototype was here at our TOR project. It was about testing high-tech, um, well, sorry. Um, yeah, we printed this plane here um, in several parts. It was SLS technology. So you can just test your sensoric systems. Um, this airplane had a span of four meters and was the biggest airplane, biggest printed airplane flying. So even here, additive manufacturing has a huge potential. Um, in general, we see three main points where additive manufacturing really has an um, advantage. So there's a part integration, bionic design, and bionic function. Here in the first picture of the part integration, you can see a fuel connector. Uh, the original part was of 14 single parts and an 18 process steps uh, assembled, uh, but we can print it as one part. And that offers us to reduce all the process steps from 18 to 5. And in addition, we could also reduce the production cost of 50%. The bionic design offers um, a lot of possibilities, um, uh, weight reduction, so material reduction. Um, here inspired by birth bone structure, you can see that we just apply material where it uh, is used and needed. A bit similar to the bionic function. Here, well, this grid structure uh, allows for using material and strength there where it's just needed. So in one part, you have different strengths just because of this design. Applied on aircraft and uh, aviation, um, we are focusing on the whole process chain. Um, the institute is a bit similar as the NLR already presented. So in our institute, we have almost a whole process chain from the design of uh, the materials, the process, but also system um, developments. Um, a bit the same it is here for the aircraft and this bionic aircraft project. So we start with the manufacturing, also dealing with operation and maintenance, and also the recycling. Um, today, I will just give you some insights about uh, different parts of this process chain to give you an overview um, on how many different steps you can apply and optimize additive manufacturing for this industry. So Bionic Aircraft um, was a European project from the call uh, Horizon 2020. 
Uh, here you can see all the partners work together with Airbus and Hexagon, for example, and Tecna and some more. Uh, it was the overall budget was about 8 million euros and we finished the project in 2019. So let me start. First, we have the prototyping, but now transferring it to parts that could actually fly. We start in the process chain with the design. And here we were inspired by bionic features. <laughs> Sorry about the thunder in the background. I hope you can still hear me well. Um, the design was inspired by nature. So we have here evolutionary optimizations over centuries. So for example, the well-known honeycomb structure, um, you can use it here for volumes, but also for stiffening surface areas. Our next example is this grass dog structure. This is perfectly suited for band proof design and also quite lightweight because you don't have to fill in the whole uh, grass dog. You have hollow spaces so you can reduce material. Uh, one of the best success stories from nature, I would say, is this tree curve um, for smooth transitions and it's just a good way to just apply some designs from nature also into additive manufacturing and to use this design freedom. So after inspired by nature, we want to apply these designs. And um, one idea to apply it is in the support structures. You can see here on the right, this bird bond structure we used in this um, down face area here and also an avioli structure uh, it's really quite thin, also looks a bit like a tree. And you can use the material consumption up here up to 90%. And it has also uh, the advantage that um, the surface roughness is minimized and you can easily remove the support structures because the uh, surface where they are attached to the real part are smaller uh, compared to conventional support structures. So we have now inspired design and uh, already transferred it into support structures. Now we need some parts where we can apply it. So we did a part screening on uh, found on three demonstrators. Here you can see the technical drawings of the original parts. Here first it's an actuator bracket, an hydraulic block, here in the COVID uh, design, and also a T-mount fitting. They are placed in different parts of the airplanes marked here in the fuselage, for example, or here in the wing structure. And applied with uh, topology optimizations and uh, bionic designs, this active bracket looks like this. The hydraulic block isn't a block anymore. It's this additive optimized design here. And also the T-mount fitting has a different shape now. So the next step is we want to produce these parts. And even here, there's additive manufacturing can also be improved to the state it has right now. Therefore, we have this um, Econity Lab version at our institute, and we optimized the process for, um, with beam shaping. Beam shaping, or the laser beam, is defined by its uh, radiation distribution and the phase. And this is essential to determining the uniformity of a beam profile over its um, propagation distance. So the beam shaper redistributes this irradiance and phase to attain a desired beam profile. The typical profile is the Gaussian profile. Um, and there the irradiance decreases with incre increasing radial distance. So far away, um, the intensity gets less. Um, we found out that the different laser beam shape is even better suited the m shape or donut shape as you can see here in the picture uh, this is 
yeah, this enables us for a rather constant irradiance. So this is more accurate, more uniform, and also more predictable. Um, it has a disadvantage that it's more complex. So the possibility of failure is a bit higher and it also has a higher cost compared to the Gaussian shape, but still it offers a lot of potential. And here on the picture below, you can see the structured light 3D pictures. This is a monitoring system with a a scanner, a scanner and two high resolution cameras. So you get a 3D a topology of your powder bed. Choose, uh, yeah, just say in line uh, quality assurance if your parts really suited and how well this shaping works. Wait, I will stop the first. So to compare these two here on the left, you can see the Gaussian beam profile. And you see a lot of spatter just flying around and yeah, it's a lot of going on that looks like a campfire here. And um, all these spatters are flying down to the powder bed, lay down and uh, maybe can cause some damage on the part and irregularities. With the donor beam or M shape profile, you can see it's more stable, there are less spatters flying around. So it just offers a higher predictability for your part quality. And the next step, we combine that with a new material. Um, here we, uh, yeah, not develop, but uh, we found out some new parameter sets for aluminum, silicium, scandium powder. And here we compare the Gaussian profile with the donor profile. And um, here on the parameter examples from scanning speed and laser power, you can see that with the Gaussian beam profile, the highest maximum we can reach in density was 98.2%. And with the donut shape, we have here a whole area um, over different scanning speeds from 1000 to 2000 millimeters per second. Also over a range of laser power from about 500 to 600, 20, 30, where we uh, reach a density of 99.7% with this profile. So when we apply this, you can see here a comparison to aluminum, silicium, 10 magnesium. And the combination of the scandium alloy and Donor profile offers us really higher strength and um, offers a lot more potential for aviation. So what does it mean? Now we have a new design, we have a new material. And um, so the part screening for A320 aircraft uh, shows us that there are massive replaceable parts. Um, so you can replace them with additive manufacturing. So in total, it were 1,602 kilograms. Doesn't sound that much, but if you apply that on the um, total amount of uh, CO2 savings per kilo on um, a lifespan of an airplane, say 30 years, it's 1,417 uh, tons. And that means that you have 28% CO2 savings compared to emissions of 2018 for the whole Lufthansa fleet. So here you have a huge impact of the resource efficiency. And here you can see the weight savings from just these two parts, 27% uh, for the actuator bracket and 28% for the steam mount fitting. So when you apply all the possibilities of additive manufacturing over the whole process chain, yeah, it just has huge potential for CO2 footprints. Um, a bit more up. recently, we had, um, this was not part of this bionic aircraft project, but uh, we think it's the next step when you're applying additive parts in your process chain that you can trick your parts and you especially for um, 
the quality assurance and also the certification, we figured out how to code your parts. So by integrating a coding during your process, you can, after, uh, after the process or during you know, the whole process chain or even inside your, uh, when the part is already assembled, you can read out by a handheld scanner um, your part. So it's contactless, wireless, and you have a fast evaluation um, with these hollow spaces here, but they are not affecting the strength of the parts. So before we check which parts you can apply them for this decoding here. So this is quite new for us. And we think that's also, yeah, fits to the whole uh, process chain also in terms of digitalization, that you have a digital twin and paperless dig uh, production. So as you can see, there's there are so many possibilities over the whole process chain and also over the whole lifespan of an aircraft. Um, also, for example, the uh, spare parts, I didn't mention them before, but even then, I think additive manufacturing could really offer here potential to reduce weight, to reduce material, and therefore reduce our footprint. And to the end, I have a little video to sum up this Bionic Aircraft project. Well, when I was in an airplane for the very first time, I remember quite well. I saw on the window shield how the raindrops were starting to, uh, to accelerate when the machine accelerated and when it took off. And I thought, uh, what a powerful machine this is. These powerful machines emit more than 2 million tons of carbon dioxide every single day, making a destructive impact on our environment. The need to reduce these emissions is of the uttermost urgency. Well, the goal of the Bionic Aircraft Project is certainly to um, contribute to the reduction of emissions uh, by applying additive manufacturing technologies by applying uh, bionic design principles uh, to structural parts and thereby um, decreasing the weight of the components. Bionic design takes nature as its inspiration. Living organisms are known for their remarkable material efficiency. It is through using as little mass as possible that they are able to protect themselves from physical harm. Nature, in, in that case, gives us proven concepts um, throughout millions of uh, uh, years of evolution to give us a blueprint of what can be possible. We have the microstructure of butterflies, which will be transferred into uh, volume infill structures that are lightweight. Honeycomb structure as a surface stiffening structure. We can it, uh, make it more resistant to compressive loads. We have the grass stalk structure to improve strut-like structures and make them more resistant to bending, more resistant to compressive loads. To automate the design process, a software toolset has been developed that is capable of parametizing the bionic features. As a consequence, a design can be converted to a CAD model with just one click of a mouse, ready to be printed. In this case, we're working with a process of laser powder bed fusion as an additive manufacturing process. The main advantage is that we are building up the parts layer by layer um, and uh, use uh, nearly 100% of the material. Studies have shown that the powder can be recycled multiple times without any loss in quality. In order to verify the quality, a camera-based system is used to perform a 3D topographical analysis of the powder bed and the manufactured part. The 3D printed parts are now ready for use. The T-mounting fitting goes inside the belly of the aircraft and the aileron jack actuator bracket is used for the wings. Further testing techniques and repair strategies contribute towards the increased service life of these components. We are achieving up to 35% lighter components uh, as compared to standard manufacturing processes. 
through additive manufacturing, there's so much more possible with regard to complex structures um, and organic designs. We are kind of pioneers in this technology. Within the next five to 10 years, we would see a lot more of additive manufactured and bionic design parts flying in aircraft. Okay, then um, at the end of my presentation, and um, thanks for your attention. <laughs>